Hello, in this presentation, we will pay payroll taxes, including FIT federal income tax and FICA, Social Security and Medicare within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that is okay. We will be paying the payroll taxes and you can go through the process of that paying payroll taxes process with the pay the liabilities function within QuickBooks at this time. If you have the backup file and would like to restore to this point in time, you can go to the file tab, restore QuickBooks, and that will take you to this data set so that we have the same information, hopefully the same amount of payroll liabilities to be paying as we work through the example. If not, then we can just look at this for an example of that. We currently have the open windows open here. So in order to have that open, if you do not at this time, you want to go to view and open windows list. We also have the only open window that's the home tab. And so we're going to go to and make sure you have that open by going to company and home tab. That's where we are. We will be, of course, down here in the employee section working with the payroll. Our goal now not to process the payroll, but to pay the payroll taxes. In order to do this, we'll give a quick recap of what we have so far in terms of what is payroll, how does it process, what are payroll taxes, how are we going to pay them, who are they going to be paid to. So within payroll, there's a lot of options within payroll. QuickBooks itself has at least three tiers of payroll options and uh, has another option which is basically the free manual version of payroll option. Those three tiers typically will differ in terms of the types of reports and the number of processing in terms of uh, forms that will be processed including the state forms and the uh, federal forms at the year end and quarterly, how much they will be populated from the state forms often being the more difficult forms because they're going to differ from state to state. If we're talking U.S. federal forms, usually pretty easier. It's They're still not the easiest thing to process, but they're easier than some other forms because, of course, they will be standardized throughout the entire um, area. And so you can they'll be standardized. The state forms uh, typically could cost more. If you use the manual process, then you'll have to actually calculate the withholdings as you enter the payroll within the payroll processing system here. So that's going to be the, the concept. The other option, of course, we have is to use a third party, such as like ADP or Paychex, to process the payroll for us outside of the QuickBooks system. And then we'd have to link that into the QuickBooks system in some way with a journal entry of some kind so that we're recording the proper expenses related to payroll in our system. No matter what tier of the payroll system we have set up, your employee system within the home tab should look something like this. We'll have an enter time, we'll have a pay employees, and we will have the pay liabilities. The pay employees is what we've looked at in a prior time period. That's what we do when we process the paycheck, when we're actually printing the paychecks or entering the data for a pay period that has entered, including hours that the employees have worked, generating the paychecks, that's those paychecks being calculated as their gross pay minus what was taken from them not for our purposes but to then be paid for them in part to uh, whatever the state and the local that including for us the federal income tax and uh, fica which is social security and medicare now of course we're going to pay those so in order to look at the payroll process we have this nice little icon and we could just click this icon and and pay the payroll that is due but in order for us to get a better understanding of this, let's take a look at the forms and uh, what we have so far. When we generate this pay employees, we will be withholding some from our employees for FIT uh, and uh, FICA, Social Security and Medicare. And we'll have to pay our portion of Social Security and Medicare and whatever other payroll taxes that uh, are we are responsible for too as well. So it's including federal on FUTA, federal unemployment tax. So anyways, we're going to go to reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial. And then we'll go down to the balance sheet. We will then change the date ranges in the customer reports section. Clicking the customer reports section and changing the date range from 010121. We will be working this in the future. 
2, 12, 31, 2, 1. We're going to look at the entire year that we will uh, be working in and OK. Although there's only one date up here, that'll allow us to drill down on the date ranges and see the detail within the date ranges. What we're looking for is the liability accounts, us owing the state and, the, and for the taxes in terms of payroll taxes. Here they are here. So we have the payroll taxes of 1598 If we double click on the payroll taxes, we then have the items here in terms of the payroll taxes. They are generated from the paychecks that we have been generating. And you'll note they're broken out by type of payroll tax. So we have in this uh, payroll taxes, we've got the 740, 720, which looks like federal income tax that we withheld from Adams here, the employee. And then we've got the 258, which looks like Social Security we withheld. And then another 258, which looks like the Social Security that we have to pay our portion as the employer. And then we have the 66, which looks like the Adams, uh, again, the amount that we withheld for Medicare. And then another 66, which looks like the amount that we have to then pay in terms of the employer for Medicare. Note, we're, this is a simplified problem. We're only dealing with federal income tax. We're not dealing with FUTA here, and we're not dealing with any state uh, income taxes. And so that's what we will be paying when we pay this process. We got the two employees, same process for the other employee, federal income tax. We've got the, uh, the uh, Medicare for the employee, the Medicare for the employer. Oh, sorry, this is Social Security for the employee, Social Security for the employer, Medicare for the employee, Medicare for the employer, for our second employee. If we were to double click on any of those, we can see more detail within here. And if we want to see more detail within this check, this is really the, the net check. These are the net taxes that were taken out of the check. If we want to see the detail of that amount, we can go to the paycheck here. And we see this item, this is the this is the earnings. This is not shown, of course, on the payroll tax ledger or transaction detail we were looking at. What was was the 720 federal income tax, FIT, Social Security we took from the employee in order to pay the government, the Medicare we took from the employee in order to pay the government, thereby giving the employee this amount, even though they earned that amount. These three amounts, those that we are including as a liability, they're not ours. We didn't take them for ourselves. We're going to have to put them in a liability and pay them to the federal government, as is our obligation. Then we have our portion, Social Security and Medicare, our employer taxes paid and calculated based on employee earnings, similar to a matching type of situation. So we're going to close that out. We're going to close this out. We're going to close this out. In essence, we are going to be paying this amount that is due. Now, when we set up the payroll, that when it, when do we have to pay that? It could be, it could differ depending on our circumstances. We might have to pay it the month after the payroll has been processed. We might have to pay it weekly or after the payroll dates. If we process the payroll bi-weekly, we might have to pay it by the next week. Just depends on, on usually the size of the payroll that we have in terms of what the government agency we're dealing with will permit in terms of when you have to pay these particular payroll taxes. Once those are set up in the system, then it's pretty easy to use the payroll process to, to pay the payroll. In order to set those in the system, we have to make sure that payroll is turned on first. And in order to do that, you, you have to pick one of the payroll processes. We're using the manual system here. We showed how to set up the manual payroll process in a prior presentation. If you go to lists up top and then if we go down to the payroll item list, we'll see some items related directly to the payroll. So we have our hourly pay, our salary pay, advanced earnings, federal unemployment, federal withholding, Medicare, uh, Medicare employee, Social Security, Social Security employee, and uh, Medicare employee aid. And we, we, of course, will have to populate those percentages. Now, if you're in the if you're in the U.S. and we're doing the Medicare Social Security, this will basically be uh, populated for us. Where it gets tricky is when we get to the uh, state taxes and those things that will differ from state to state. We'll have to make sure that we have the right percentages in these items. So then we'll go to the home tab. And instead of just writing a check and saying we, we're going to write a check, we have a liability. It's already tracking the reliability. 
instead of just writing a check then, we want to go through the pay liabilities and, the li and what this will do is it'll help QuickBooks to tie everything together. It'll help QuickBooks to generate reports that are all within the pay well, payroll process. And it'll help us to just to uh, track the process and let QuickBooks do more of these calculations for us. So what we are going to do instead of just writing the check is say pay liabilities. And then we're going to select the date ranges that we're going to pay the liabilities for. In our example, we're going to say we're going to pay it for the time period of 01012121 to one we're working in the future for the first month so we're imagining it's in february and we are paying off the month of january in the year of 2021 so we're going to say okay and then we have these items so if we go through this first to print checks we're not going to print checks in this example if we were to print the checks then of course we would leave that on we would have our printed checks that are pre-set up and then we would have to put those into the printer and print them if we tab through these items, so I'm going to uncheck the print checks. We tab through these items. It's going to be printed from our checking account. If we have another account, a payroll account, then we, we want to make sure that we have the proper account in terms of the cash being removed from the proper account. Review liability check to enter expense penalties. We're going to keep that as the default. And the date for us is going to be 02-28-21. Uh, February 28th. That's when we're going to write the check. But remember the dates that we're running the payroll are January 1st through show payroll liabilities. January 1st through 0101. I'm sorry, 013121. So those are going to be the liabilities we're paying. So we're paying the liabilities as of the end of January. We are paying them in uh, the end of February. This again is something that you're going to make sure you want to set up and have the proper payroll time period set up in accordance with whatever regulations we are dealing with. But the, the point being that we're going to write this date, of course, the date that the check that we're going to write. And we're going to have these dates being the range in which we're going to be dealing with the payroll. So everything that happened in January is the range we're dealing with here. Then we can check all that apply. So we're going to say payroll item has no liability. So, okay. Oh, actually, we don't need, I'm not going to have the federal unemployment. So I'm not going to check that one. So they're saying that no vendor has been set up. We don't have any liability for it. And uh, so we're not going to be using that. Payroll item has no agency. So if that's the case, we're going to have to set up the agency that we are going to be paying the federal withholdings to. So we will set up the vendor. I'm going to say yes. We're going to say enter name for the federal withholding tax payroll item. We will keep it at the federal withholdings. This is going to be a federal withholding. Payroll item is an active no. So we're going to say next. Uh, enter name of agency which liability is paid. If we look at the agencies, these are basically just the vendors that we have here. Now these are going to be federal. So I'm going to say internal revenue service the internal revenue service and then we will say next it's saying we haven't set this up do we want to set it up we're going to go yes we're going to set this up i'm going to set it up as the quick setup what rather than uh the setup the long setup which is where we would put the address and everything else related to it we're going to set the quick setup and next and select the items that will increase wages for calculating federal income tax withholding. I'm going to keep this as the default on both of those, the salary and hourly being the only two payroll items we currently have set up, and finish that process. So there we have that. I'm going to check off the Medicare, do the same thing that we're going to set up, and say yes, that is going to be Medicare, and we're going to keep those two. We're going to say next. And then it's going to also go to the Internal Revenue Service. So it's picking that for us now. The, these accounts are correct. Liability account, liability account, correct. We're going to say next. Payroll expense, correct. Next. And we have the rate 0.045. That's it. So we're going to say next. For both the salary and uh, the two items we have set up, that is it. And finished. So we're going to check off that item. Once we have the items set up, we're going to go ahead and create the checks here. Now, note that so we have everything checked off. We're going to go ahead and create the checks. 
If we wanted to double check this note, we could run the nice little payroll liabilities report here. This is a report that could be found in the reports and if we went to employee and payroll as well. But if we take a look at that report real quick, we can see our, our liability report as of 01, uh, 01 21, January 1st, 2021 to January 31st, 2021. And here is our data. So that could be useful to run that. So here we have that. That's going to be what we have. So we're going to say create. So we will create this. And it has then generated uh, the checks that need to be generated. We're going to go ahead and close this. And then if we take a look at what has happened, we can go to the balance sheet at this time and scroll up to the top, looking in the checking account, double clicking the checking account, scrolling down, we see the checks that we have written. We wrote uh, the three checks here, put them in as separate checks. So there's the 830 uh, there that the payroll check has been generated. So when we go through this process, it will create an actual check and we can also go to uh, close this out if we go to the payroll liability then if we scroll down we have the payroll liability that is now zero so if we if it's zero then we're gonna we could check this by going to the lists up top and going to the chart of accounts and then we're looking at the liabilities we want the payroll liability there it is it's at zero if we want the detail, we can double click on that item and see the detail. If we want to look at the individual checks, we can check on an individual check and uh, see some of the detail for that. So if we close this back out, back to the home tab, uh, that's going to be the process for paying the liability. Once again, once it's set up, it's not too bad of a process. It does take a little bit of setting up. We did have to set up some vendors at this point even still that had not yet been set up for the payroll process but once those had been set up next time it would be much easier for us to pay that payroll liability and fairly easy for quickbooks then to track that information i uh, just got to make sure that we have it all set up properly within uh, the uh, setup process when we put the payroll items together remember that when we did pay off this liability note what happened is we paid off the liability, decreasing the liability, and decreasing the checking account. No effect on net income at this point in time, at the point in time we pay off the liabilities. The income statement was affected for both payroll taxes and the wages when we generated the paychecks at the time when we debited the or increased the expense for payroll tax expense and uh, payroll and as well as payroll. Uh, expenses itself decreasing the net income at that point here we're just paying off for something that has happened already in the past some something we have consumed labor that has been consumed in the past and we now owe it so we're paying off a liability with the cash here